Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is day seven of Loose Powder Week and we are talking about the Giorgio Armani Microfill Loose Powder and I have it in Universal Nude. Uh, this is gonna be a first impression. I haven't even opened up this box yet. So if you're interested in discovering this powder with me, then just keep on watching. All right, I'm excited for this powder. So I was a little bit confused. Uh, well, I think when this powder first came out or the first kind of variation of this powder that first was released, it was very, very sparkly. I was in Sephora and I remember testing it and I was like, whoa. Like it was almost like highlighter. But, mm, that's not really what I'm looking for in a loose powder. But then I feel like they came out with this uh, kind of, I think, I haven't opened it yet, but this matte universal nude version. So I was like, oh, that seems promising. So I thought I'd give it a shot. Oh, it looks very light. So here's what the packaging looks like. It looks very similar to the YSL, except it has obviously the black top with the Armani logo on there, but it like looks like the similar uh, size. So anyway, let's go ahead and open it. I think actually they are owned by the same company. Yes, I think they're both owned by L'Oreal, so it's probably the same packaging essentially. Here's what's included. We've got the puff and we have the the sifter here, again, very, I think exactly the same to the YSL. The holes in the sifter are centered. Uh, so let me go ahead and rip off the seal and again tell you that it is a little bit late. It's 9.30 in the morning. Um, I have Clay de Poe, <clears throat> excuse me, I have Clay de Poe, the foundation on, and I have the Clay de Poe concealer on, and that is it. After reading a little bit about this powder, I think you can use it both as a setting and a finishing powder, and it's supposed to give you kind of a matte finish. So I definitely would like to use it as a setting powder. I just want to see exactly how matte it is. If it is, if it's extremely matte, I may just stop there and just leave it as a setting powder and see how that works um, and forego any finishing powder and just see how it wears during the day. But uh, let's go ahead and check it out. So if you are new to my channel, I do have dry sensitive skin and I'll be pointing out some of my problem areas as we do close-ups, but that would be like my forehead and then my nose chin area. So their suggested use uh, is to use a puff, press and roll, concentrating in T-zone, any other locations to reduce shine and to mattify. So I don't necessarily need to mattify under my eyes, but I do like to set my concealer down so it doesn't do anything too funky during the day. So let me take a kind of closer look at this powder. I'm just trying to get a sense as to whether it has any finish to it, whether it has any sparkles whatsoever. Oh, interesting. It does have uh, sparkles in there. I'm going to stop showing you <laughs> swatches since you can't see it. The camera can't detect these micro glitters, but there are little micro glitters in here and that's generally not my preference for setting powders, but as we've seen throughout this week, most of the time those micro glitters are completely undetectable on the actual skin when you apply it. So uh, let's give it a shot. I'm gonna go in with uh, this puff. I'm going to press and roll. So I definitely see the micro glitters around my eye. I'm gonna do a close-up right now and just see if the camera can pick it up at all. Maybe I'll just kind of tilt my head in a bunch of different directions to see if the light can pick up the little micro glitters. Uh, but they're definitely there. Definitely much more detectable than the YSL. I would say the glitters in here are even finer than the glitters in the Sicily. The Sicily I didn't feel like there was as many, but I felt like they were a little bit more obvious. It definitely has a different effect. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, but uh, let's just go ahead and continue on. Let me go ahead and apply the powder to the rest of this side of my face and we'll do a little comparison. I'm gonna take my Chikahoto Z1 brush again. This brush has been my favorite for setting. I think that's kind of the conclusion I've come to this past week. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and dip this in. Just grab a little bit there. I do feel like it is uh, lightening or whitening my skin a little bit. I think you can see that in the camera, but I can definitely see this kind of like veil of white powder on my face. That I'm not especially happy with, but let's continue. So the glitters are uh, pretty obvious, especially close up. Um, as soon as I kind of bring my mirror close to my face, I can see them kind of like all over my skin. 
it is, like I said, it's it's pretty fine. It, it's a very, very fine glitter. So I'm not finding it like unacceptable, like I will never use this powder, but it is definitely something that I may prefer as a finishing powder. I also find it odd if this is a powder that's supposed to mattify, why you would then add those glitters. I guess even if you have oily skin, let's say, and you want like a matte finish, you may still want a little bit of that radiance. That I guess that's my guess. But it did uh, mattify the foundation a little bit. Not the most mattifying powder I've used. So let me go ahead and apply it to the rest of my face and then we can kind of take another look. Okay, there it is applied to my entire face. Um, I'm sitting here trying to decide if the powder is just making me look a little whiter or if it's actually giving me a brightening effect. But I do feel like it has definitely uh, lightened up my complexion like a little bit, so I don't think it's completely transparent. It's, it's translucent though. There's definitely a lot of sheerness going on. It's not emphasizing fine lines. It's not doing anything weird around the oilier parts of my face, but it does look a little bit odd around my forehead where I do have my eczema texture. We'll just call it that. And um, I don't have active eczema there, but it has, um, that's kind of where it pops up and it, it leaves the texture of my skin a little bit Mm, a little bit funky. So if I have products that like cling to things, they're gonna, it's gonna cling up there and that's usually kind of like my test as to whether a product or not is going to uh, cling or, or, or do weird things. And this one's doing it a little bit. I don't think necessarily it's the powder that's clinging. I do think that it's possibly the radiance and the micro glitters in here that's just kind of like reflecting off of it strangely. So this powder is very interesting to me. I don't know what to make of it just yet because it's kind of doing all these things that I wasn't expecting it to do, especially by reading its description. I really thought it was just going to be like the Chanel powder. It's just going to have like a natural kind of matte finish and that would be it. But between the micro glitters, between the fact that I think it is kind of giving me like this pearly sheen, so it's not exactly matte, the fact that I think it is kind of lightening my complexion a little bit, I'm like, I'm a little bit thrown. Let me digest this for a little bit while I put on the rest of my makeup, and I think I will try using this as a finishing powder, at least maybe along my cheeks to kind of blend everything in. So I think what I'll do is add some bronzer and blush. I'll, I'll forego highlighter because I want to see exactly how radiant this is uh, and do the rest of my makeup, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and I just put on some matte blush, matte bronzer on uh, very lightly. Um, but some observations I made while I was putting my makeup on, I don't think I like this powder as a setting powder. It feels like it's really just sort of sitting on top of my skin, not in a good way. I feel like I kind of started to notice it at the tip of my nose. You know when you can see powder just sort of sitting there? That's what it's kind of doing. Like it's just sort of like dotted all over my nose and I'm not really a Fan. and I feel like the texture on my forehead I feel like the appearance of it is getting worse so let's see if using it as a finishing powder really buffing it out let's see if that helps the situation hopefully so again I'm gonna go in with my favorite uh, finishing powder brush the Sonia G face one brush I'm gonna have to pour some out into the cap here and again I'm gonna pounce it and then buff Looks nice as finishing powder here, but let's go ahead and actually buff out my cheek area, see, see what it does to the blush bronzer. Also let's add just a teensy bit more to the nose area and see if buffing it out helps. So it definitely, I think, helped the nose area. Now this area looks very soft, it looks a little velvety, it doesn't look quite as just like powder, like just powder was sitting on top of my face. I feel like my cheek looks also really, really nice. Again, I'm liking this radiance as finishing. So without, with, I think it buffed out my blush and my bronzer nicely as well. And now let's see if it will help the appearance of my texture up here. I don't think it's helped that too much. I feel like this powder is very uh, kind of clingy and yeah, it's not doing great things to my forehead skin over here. All right, let me buff out the rest of my face and we'll take another look. So I do like this powder much more after it's been buffed. I like, I think once you buff it, the micro glitters kind of 
uh, dissipate quite a bit and you're left with this nice kind of pearly sheen which is really really nice my nose area is looking much better now that it's been buffed in my chin looks okay uh, I just have my minor issues with my forehead texture not great for that but otherwise it's okay so let me do a check-in in a few hours again I started at 9 30 so maybe I'll be back at like 1 32 o'clock give you like a four four and a half hour check-in at that point we'll see how it goes I think I am going to the dog park today it's a beautiful day out so this powder will definitely get put through the test so I'll see you later um, I was just inspecting my face in the mirror. I feel like I start every check in the same way. I'm really liking the way this powder is looking. I feel like the um, pearly finish has kind of come into its own. It's really starting to like warm up with my skin. It's really starting to look uh, kind of like part of my skin where I was a little bit worried when I was using it as setting powder. It looked like it was just sort of sitting on top. But I think adding that finishing layer, really buffing it in, helped. The only issue that I see is that I feel like my under eyes are looking a little aged. I feel like the, the lines there are looking a little emphasized, a little bit more than usual. So I'm starting to lean towards the conclusion that this is a great finishing powder, but not a great setting powder. I feel like a setting powder would do a much better kind of blurring job. Um, I also don't like that much kind of glitter around my under eyes. I just feel like... I don't know, I just feel like you're kind of just asking for it. Like it's really gonna highlight the wrong things. But I am gonna try and uh, zoom in and see, you know, the lights really blow out quite a bit, but my eyes do look really aged right in here, like right towards the inner corner here. And then again, like over to the tops of my cheekbones where I have these kind of like smile wrinkles. So hopefully you guys can see that. I turned down my ring light a little bit. But other than that, it's looking good. I think my forehead looks the same um, as it did when I first applied it. So it doesn't look like it's any more textured than it was before. And around my oilier areas, my nose and my chin area, everything looks fine. It's not doing anything uh, weird around my nostrils or my chin. It's not doing any of that caking up. And I feel like it's given my skin just this really nice pearly finish along my cheeks. So I'll be back towards the end of the day to give you my final thoughts. So I'll see you then. Hello everyone, it is 5.30 in the afternoon. So we're at the eight hour mark and I was just inspecting my face. I like the finish that this powder has given me. Um, definitely a nice pearly sheen. I could probably do without the little micro glitters because I feel like I'm seeing them more as the day goes on which I find very interesting. I don't know, maybe it's like the light is changing in my room or something, but I do feel like I'm seeing the micro glitters on my skin a lot more now. Now the only issue I'm seeing is that it is kind of doing weird things around my texture on my forehead up here. It looks like it's just, um, almost looks like it's separating in this weird way, um, but I think what it's doing actually is just sort of clinging to this strange texture that I have on my forehead. So that is not good, but this probably popped up at like the six, seven hour mark. Um, so not bad. In my opinion though, it's just, it's just lacking like a little something. I can't put my finger on it, but I think you guys can probably relate. When you use a product and it's fine, like it does all the things it says it's gonna do, you're inspecting it, you're like, okay, I have a nice sheen. Okay, it kind of blurs, you know, okay, it's, it's set my makeup. Like it's done all it's supposed to do, but it's just missing something. Like I look at my face and I don't think like, oh, this looks nice. Like I felt that way with the YSL. I really liked that powder. I felt like, you know, there was just, it, you know, there was just little something to it. There was something to that product and it just worked with my skin and I felt like it just kind of like brought out the best of my complexion. I don't really feel that with the Armani and I wonder if it's because this powder is so uh, light and I do feel like it kind of like washed me out in a bit and maybe its purpose was to brighten my complexion but I don't think it did that and that's generally why I don't like powders that are too light for my skin tone because I always feel like it ends up making me look kind of dull and ashy instead of giving me a brightening effect, which is what I think kind of lighter powders are supposed to do. So anyway, I'm sorry, I feel like the criticism I'm, I'm giving this powder is just so subjective and it's just, it's not very, you know, scientific in any way. But it's just, yeah, it's just one of those products. You know, I'm staring at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I have a nice sheen, you know, it looks okay, blah, blah, blah. I almost feel like the Chanel powder that we saw yesterday. Sorry. Hi, baby. Yes. Okay, we'll play in just a second, okay? 
Um, even though that had a matte finish, I felt like it did more for my skin. I felt like it did more for my complexion. Yeah, this one is just, it's just lacking for me. And I, I really wish it didn't have as much micro glitter as it does. So anyway, that's it for this video. Um, those are my thoughts and feelings on the Armani Microfill Loose Powder in Universal Nude. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know a bunch of you have been asking me about the, um, the Clay Depot powder, so that's coming tomorrow. Definitely subscribe if you want to keep up with my videos. I actually just had a viewer comment. She was like, I thought this was, you know, a YouTuber's like bullshitting me or whatever, but she's like, I know I subscribe to your channel. I just checked and I was unsubscribed. So, so if you think you've subscribed to my channel, just double check and make sure that you are subscribed. I know YouTube will unsubscribe you automatically. I think if you just like don't watch my videos for a while, they just kind of consider you inactive. But anyway, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would really love to have you and stay tuned for tomorrow's Clay to Poe Loose Powder video. I'll see you then.